All right. So um, today we're diving into something that's been, well, it feels like it's been popping up more and more lately. Mm -hmm. Like every time you open an app, it's like, hey, want to keep your data private? Time to open your wallet. You know, those consent or pay models. Yeah, exactly. And what's interesting here is that, uh, well, we're looking at this new opinion from the European Data Protection Board. The EDPB. Right, the EDPB. And they're not just saying, hey, these models, they might be a problem. It's deeper than that. They're really going back to basics, you know? Like, what does it actually mean for consent to be freely given? In a world where you could lose access to stuff you actually need if you don't want to share your data. So it's not just like, are you okay with us showing you some targeted ads? This is like, mm -hmm. hey, if you don't let us use your data, you might lose access to, like years of connections, or even essential services. Precisely. Think about it. You open up, say, your go-to social media app, the one where you've built your network, you've shared memories, all that, and suddenly, bam, paywall. Monthly fee for an ad-free experience, or give us your data and we'll hit you with the hyper-personalized advertising. Okay, see, that hits different than just getting a targeted ad for some shoes I may have looked at online. Right. So what's the EDPB actually saying about how this whole consent or pay thing affects whether our consent is actually freely given? So they're really honing in on a few key things. Uh, first up, detriment. Basically, what they're asking is what happens if you don't consent or if you don't want to pay? Is it actually going to limit your access to, like we said, essential services or even just the ability to connect with people? I mean, they even talk about situations where, say, people looking for jobs, right, or professionals, they might be at a real disadvantage if they choose not to pay or not to share data on certain platforms. So it's almost like the EDPB is worried these platforms are holding our online lives hostage in a way. Like, give us your data or risk losing everything you've built here. And it's not just any platforms, right? We're talking about the giants here, the ones with like millions, billions of users who can just be like, take it or leave it. Yeah, totally. You know, those ones, like you probably use them every day. Yeah, the ones you can't really avoid. Yeah, and the EDPB even calls them out specifically as large online platforms, just to make that crystal clear. Right, like the kind of platforms that are so embedded in our lives now that it's like, how do you even avoid them if you want to, I don't know, like connect with people? find a job, see what's going on in the world. Yeah. EDPB is looking right at them. Right at them. Okay, so let's unpack this whole freely given consent thing because that seems to be at the heart of this. Yeah, for sure. So GDPR, pretty clear. You have the right to say no to companies using your data, especially for things like targeted ads. But these days, saying no often means you got to pay up. Yeah. Like what? And that's where the EDPB starts to raise some eyebrows. They're saying, look, when not consenting to sharing your data means missing out on basic features of the service <laughs> or like even, you know, potentially facing social isolation because you can't connect with people the same way or even like losing job opportunities because you're not seeing those ads. Yeah. That doesn't exactly sound like a free choice, does it? Yeah. It's like it's like they're saying you can have this basic gym membership, but if you want to take the like spin glasses, you got to give us all your data. Exactly. And it just feels kind of icky. It feels it feels kind of wrong. And to make things even more interesting, the EDPB also says that even if a company offers a cheaper plan without the data demands, it still might not be enough. Oh, really? Yeah. Like they're hinting that maybe, just maybe, platforms should be offering a genuinely free version. Right. So like maybe it has less intrusive ads or no tracking for certain purposes. Okay. That way you've got an actual third option. It's not just your data or your wallet. So it's more than just offering a cheaper alternative. It's about making sure the free option isn't like a punishment. Right. Like you're not like missing out on stuff just because you don't want to share your data. Yeah, you're not being penalized for protecting your privacy. Uh -huh. The EDPB, they keep using this phrase, genuinely equivalent, which is interesting. Oh, what does that even mean? Yeah. Well, basically they're saying the free version can't be some like watered down experience. It has to be comparable to what you would get if you did share your data. So they're not messing around. They're like drawing a line in the sand here. Yeah. Offer a real alternative or, you know. Or else. Or else. Wow, high stakes. High stakes. And it gets even, I don't know, more intense maybe. Because the EDPB doesn't stop there. They go on to question whether it's ever okay to charge for a more privacy-respecting option. At all. Wait, so they're saying putting a price tag on privacy, like, fundamentally flawed? It seems so, yeah. <laughs> they're basically arguing that you shouldn't be able to buy and sell personal data like it's some kind of commodity. Right. Your rights, especially your right to privacy, shouldn't depend on how much money you have. Okay. The EDPB even uses this very specific legal term. It's uh, Is it dominant position? You got it. 
Nailed it. Yeah. See, they're concerned that these consent or pay models play right into this power imbalance between users and these massive companies. It's like, even if a company isn't technically dominant in, like, the legal sense, they're worried these models can still make users feel trapped. Trapped. So it's like they're saying it doesn't matter if you can legally get away with it. What matters is if it feels like you have a real choice. Exactly. And right now, for a lot of people, it doesn't. Not really. So what happens if a company does want to charge a fee? Like, are they just out of luck? N not necessarily. Mm. But it sounds like they better have a good explanation ready right. because the EDPB is really emphasizing the importance of an appropriate fee, if a fee even exists at all. Okay, so what makes a fee appropriate in the eyes of the EDPB? What are we talking about here? Well, it's tricky because they don't exactly give us a checklist or anything, which I guess makes sense because every situation ah. is going to be different, right? Yep. But they're definitely like looking for fairness. It's got to be a genuine choice. Mm -hmm. So like they're saying the fee can't be so high that it basically forces people to hand over their data because they can't afford the paid version. Ah, uh, okay. So no super exclusive like privacy tiers that only the ultra wealthy can afford right and everyone else is like stuck with the data tracking version yeah exactly it's about making sure the fee doesn't like undermine the whole point of freely given consent in the first place like the edpb seems to be saying hey if you're going to charge you better be ready to explain why that specific fee is fair and doesn't put people in a tough spot. Yeah, it's almost like they're saying we're watching you yeah. and we're not afraid to call you out if you try to pull a fast one. Yeah, they're definitely sending a message. Which makes me wonder, like, how will the data protection authorities actually decide what crosses the line? That's the really interesting part, right? Mm -hmm. The EDPB basically says it's up to those authorities to decide on a case by case basis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So users aren't just like left to fend for themselves. There's, there's someone who's supposed to be looking out for them. Okay, that's good at least. It's like having a ref on the field, you know? Right. Making sure everyone's playing by the rules, even if those rules are still, I don't know, kind of being figured out. Yeah, exactly. It's a work in progress. But even if a platform does jump through all these hoops, right? Uh, offers an appropriate fee, makes it seem legit. Sounds like the EDPB isn't quite done with them yet. You're catching on, I like it. Yeah. Even if a fee is involved, they are really hammering home that all those other GDPR consent requirements still apply. So no more hiding behind, like, walls of tiny text and pre-checked boxes. And ideally, no. No more sneaking things past users. The EDPB is calling for, like, radical transparency. Like, they're saying platforms need to be crystal clear about what exactly you are consenting to in every single version of the service. Mm -hmm. No more of this bundling everything together in one vague, this is going to make things better request. So what does that actually look like? Are we talking like completely different privacy policies for every pricing tier? It'll be interesting to see, right, how platforms actually adapt to this. Yeah. But the EDPB is definitely pushing for more, you know, like granular consent. Users should be able to choose, okay, what data they share, how is it being used, mm -hmm. especially when you're talking about something as complex and potentially intrusive as behavioral advertising. Yeah. Like no more shady tactics. It's about putting putting users in control. Okay, so informed and specific consent. Basically, mm. no more, if you want to use our app, you got to give us the keys to your entire digital life. Pretty much. But there was one more thing that GDPR was really big on, right? The right to withdraw consent. What the EDPB have to say about that? They touch on that too. They're like uh, reminding platforms that, hey, you know, users should be able to withdraw consent as easily as they gave it. Make it easy. Yeah, like no crazy convoluted processes, no hidden hoops to jump through, just a clear, straightforward way to, you know, reclaim control of your data. Because, let's be real, who actually remembers what they consented to, like, six months ago? Exactly. Out of sight, out of mind. Exactly. Did the EDPB say anything about how often platforms should be reminding users about what they've consented to? Because I feel like, just as I've forgotten what I've agreed to, Bam, another consent pop-up. It's so true. It's never-ending. They actually do suggest that platforms should be, like, proactive about this. They should be reminding users about their choices um, on a regular basis, yeah. giving them a chance to update their preferences if they've, you know, changed their mind. Which makes a lot of sense. Consent shouldn't be this one-time hurdle you clear and then you can use a service. Yeah. It should be more of an ongoing conversation. Right, exactly. It's about, like, building trust, making sure that users feel respected, like, throughout their whole experience, not just at that initial sign-up. Totally. So it sounds like the EDPB is really trying to shift the power dynamic here, yep. making it clear that, hey, 
Users actually have rights. You need to treat them with respect, regardless of whether they're giving you money or not. They're trying to close that gap between what's like technically legal and what actually feels fair right. and ethical. Right. And that brings us to what might be the most important question of all. Which is? Do you think the EDPB will actually be able to enforce any of this? That's the million dollar question, right? Right. This opinion sends a very strong message, but will it actually change anything? Right. Like, will it actually translate into real change? Yeah. And that depends on, you know, a couple of things like how effectively is this thing going to be enforced and how are companies actually going to respond? Because let's be real, some companies might just see this as a bunch of legal jargon and try to find loopholes. Oh, absolutely. There's definitely a risk that some companies are going to be like, how can we interpret this in a way that you know, lets us keep doing what we're doing right. rather than actually making meaningful changes to prioritize user privacy? Right. So what's the solution then? What needs to happen for this to actually make a difference? Well, I mean, for starters, users need to know what their rights even are. Right. They need to understand what's at stake here, because the more people who are like aware of this stuff and yeah. demanding better privacy practices, the more pressure it puts on these companies to actually listen. So knowledge is power. Yeah. If enough people are like, hey, cut it out. <laughs> yep. Push back. Companies will have no choice but to adapt. Exactly. It's a collective effort, but it's not just on users. Data protection authorities, they have a huge role to play here. They got to actually enforce GDPR, hold these companies accountable. We need to see action, not just strongly worded statements, you know? Yeah, it's like you were saying before, it's great to have the ref on the field, but they got to be willing to call out the fouls. Exactly. And hand out penalties when necessary. Yes. And then on top of that, there's the role of technology itself. We need to see more innovation in privacy enhancing tech, like mm -hmm. stuff that can actually help companies protect user data. Yeah. By design. So it's kind of like a multi-pronged approach. Yeah. Empowered users. Yes. Vigilant regulators. Yes. And businesses that are actually willing to use this new technology. Exactly. It's complicated, obviously, okay. but with the right combination of pressure and innovation, I, th I think we can get there. Yeah. We can move towards a future where privacy isn't a luxury. It's just expected. Yeah. It's a fundamental right. It should be the default. Okay, so to sum it all up, it sounds like what you're saying is the EDPB is basically saying, look, these consent or pay models, not necessarily illegal, but yeah. you are walking a very, very, very thin line here. Yeah, be careful. Platforms really got to make sure that they are not exploiting users and that the choice they're giving is truly free. Free, fair, transparent. All of it. All the things. And if they can't do that. Well, like we were talking about. Yeah. There could be consequences. Like what? What are the consequences here? Well, for starters, they could be facing some pretty hefty fines from data protection authorities. We talking like millions of dollars, yeah. billions. Potentially, yeah. Yeah. But it's even more than that. Think about their reputation. Oh, right. That's huge. Because in the digital age, that's like everything. Exactly. One viral tweet storm about shady privacy practices and that's it. Yeah, it's over. Damage is done. They're done. And then on top of that, you've got the potential for actual legal action. Yeah. From individuals, from consumer groups. Right. So the stakes are pretty high. So if I'm a company using one of these models right now, yeah, I'd be sweating a little bit. Maybe just a little bit. I would say if I were them, I'd be taking a very close look at this EDPB opinion. Yeah. Seriously, consider if my practices are actually lining up. You might even want to call a lawyer. Eh, probably not a bad idea. Just to be safe. Better safe than sorry. Now, before we wrap things up, I want to go back to something you mentioned earlier about this opinion focusing on, you know, large online platforms, which makes sense. They've got a lot of power. But it makes you think, like, what about the smaller companies, the ones that aren't like Facebook or Google, but they're still collecting our data, they're still using it. Should they be held to the same standard? It's a really good question. It's kind of like just because you can do something doesn't mean you should, right? Right. Like even if a smaller company isn't as big as, as one of the giants, a bad consent experience is still a bad consent experience. Whether it's coming from a tiny company or a huge one, it's still not okay. Yeah, and let's be honest, a lot of those smaller companies are basically just copying what the big guys are doing, hoping we won't notice. It's true. They think they can fly under the radar. Wow. But this opinion from the EDPB, it's like a good reminder that, look, size doesn't matter. You don't get a free pass just because you're small. Right. Those GDPR rules, hmm. they apply to everyone. 
doesn't matter if you're a multinational corporation or like a local startup. You got to play by the rules. So it's not just about like taking on the Goliaths. It's about making sure everyone in the game is playing fair. Exactly. Right. Because at the end of the day, it's your data. Yeah. It doesn't matter who's asking for it. You get to decide how it's used. And you deserve to have that choice respected. Big company, small company, it shouldn't matter. It's about setting a new standard for how we think about data, how we interact with these services online. No more shady stuff, no more taking advantage. Right. Look, it's not just about following the rules because you have to. It's about actually believing in it, you know, mm. respecting users, respecting their privacy. It's got to be more than just a box you tick. Yeah, it's got to be genuine. Well, we've covered a lot of ground today. This EDPB opinion has given me a lot to think about. I'm not going to lie. Me too. It's a lot. It feels like this whole conversation about data privacy is like shifting and companies, they got to adapt if they want to stay on the right side of, well, of the law, but also their users. It's a crucial moment. Like the decisions they make now, yeah. they're going to have consequences for years to come. Yeah, big time. So as always, I guess we're left with more questions than answers, maybe. <laughs> Always. But hopefully everyone listening, you've learned something new today. You've got some new food for thought. Yeah. And hopefully you feel a little more empowered to, you know, stand up for your privacy, demand better from the companies you interact with every single day. Yes, 100%. You have a voice, use it. All right. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive. We'll catch you next time. All right. So um, today we're diving into something that's been, well, it feels like it's been popping up more and more lately. Mm -hmm. Like every time you open an app, it's like, hey, want to keep your data private? Time to open your wallet. You know, those consent or pay models. Yeah, exactly. And what's interesting here is that, uh, well, we're looking at this new opinion from the European Data Protection Board. The EDPB. Right, the EDPB. And they're not just saying, hey, these models, they might be a problem. It's deeper than that. They're really going back to basics, you know? Like, what does it actually mean for consent to be freely given? In a world where you could lose access to stuff you actually need if you don't want to share your data. So it's not just like, are you okay with us showing you some targeted ads? This is like, mm -hmm. hey, if you don't let us use your data, you might lose access to, like, years of connections or even essential services. Precisely. Think about it. You open up, say, your go-to social media app, the one where you've built your network, you've shared memories, all that, and suddenly, bam, paywall. Monthly fee for an ad-free experience. Or give us your data and we'll hit you with the hyper-personalized advertising. Okay, see, that hits different than just getting a targeted ad for some shoes I may have looked at online. Right. So what's the EDPB actually saying about how this whole consent or pay thing affects whether our consent is actually freely given? So they're really honing in on a few key things. Uh, first up, detriment. Basically what they're asking is what happens if you don't consent or if you don't want to pay? Is it actually going to limit your access to, like we said, essential services or even just the ability to connect with people? I mean, they even talk about situations where, say, people looking for jobs, right, or professionals, they might be at a real disadvantage if they choose not to pay or not to share data on certain platforms. So it's almost like the EDPB is worried these platforms are holding our online lives hostage in a way. like. Give us your data or risk losing everything you've built here. Yeah, it's a really high stakes decision to be facing, right? Mm -hmm. And it's not just about access either. They're also looking at the power dynamics at play here, right? Like how the sheer size and dominance of these platforms, especially when you bring in something called network effects. Have you heard of that? I've heard of it, yeah. So that's the whole idea that a platform becomes more valuable the more people use it. Right, right. Like even if I had concerns about a specific platform, if everyone's there, it's like, what am I going to do? Exactly. You feel like you have to be there too. And that's what the EDPB is getting at. They're drawing a line between that feeling and actual real world cases of market dominance. They're basically asking, are these platforms the only option? Because if they are, it's almost impossible to say no to their terms. It makes you wonder if consent can even be free at that point when you're dealing with a company that has that much power online. Right. And that leads us to another big thing the EDPB is looking at. Conditionality. They want to know. Is paying is handing over money the only way to get those targeted ads off your screen? Are there other options? Like, are there genuine alternatives being offered? So it's not just about having the option to pay. It's about whether that's the only real choice you have. Exactly. And what they want, what the EDPB is really pushing for, 
is platforms to think beyond that paywall. Like, what about a free version, but with less intrusive ads, maybe ads based on like what you're actually looking at at that moment rather than your entire online history. Yeah, that's a good point. It's about having a real choice, right? Not just feeling like, well, I guess it's this or nothing. But hang on. The EDPB isn't just looking at these big payer consent choices. They're also diving into the details, like how platforms actually handle consent in the first place. What's going on there? Well, one thing that really jumps out is this idea of informed consent, right? They really hammer this point home. Platforms have got to be crystal clear about what data they're taking. And I mean crystal clear. No more hiding behind vague terms. Right. Like when they say they use your data for service improvement and you're like, okay, but what does it even mean? It's like those terms and conditions we all just blindly scroll through, you know, nobody actually reads those. But the EDPB is calling for specifics. They even give examples of what not to do, which I thought was interesting. Oh, really? Like what? Well, for example, they talk about how platforms need to make it just as easy to opt out of data collection as it is to opt in. None of that burying the opt out button in a maze of settings. Because let's be real, they make it so easy to just click accept and move on. It's like they're practically nudging us towards sharing more data just because it's the path of least resistance. Exactly. And the EDPB is saying, nope, not on our watch. Give users control, make it clear and make it easy. No more of these dark patterns. Dark patterns is what they're calling it. <laughs> well, they don't use that term specifically, but that's essentially what they're getting at. They call out what they call sneaky wording that's meant to, you know, sway our choices without us even realizing it. Oh, sneaky wording. Okay, so like what does that look like in practice? Give me an example. Okay, so think about those buttons that say something like continue without payment. Sounds pretty straightforward, yeah. Yeah, totally. Like you're just choosing not to pay. Right. Exactly. But the EDPD argues that it's misleading because it makes it seem like you're just opting out of paying, not actively consenting to data sharing. Ooh, I've totally fallen for that before. You think you're being smart, like you're getting one over on them, but really you're just clicking yes to data sharing without even realizing it. Exactly. And that's why the EDPB is pushing for clear, unambiguous language. No more tricking users. They want people to know exactly what they're agreeing to when they click that button. It's like they're saying, hey, we see what you're doing there, and we're not letting it slide. Right. But, okay, we've gone through a lot here. For people listening, what's the like the bottom line? What does this EDPB opinion actually mean for us out here using these platforms every day? Well, I think the biggest thing to remember is that the EDPB is drawing a line in the sand. They're saying, you know, you can't hold our data hostage anymore. They want to see a real change in how online platforms handle all this, how they think about consent, how they approach data privacy. I mean, they aren't saying consent or pay models are completely banned, but they're definitely waving some big red flags. And they're really pushing for these platforms to come up with different ways of doing things, ways that put the user first. Which makes sense, right? Yeah. After everything we've talked about, they're essentially saying, don't back users into a corner where they feel like their only options are to like empty their wallets or hand over all their data. Exactly. And it really raises an interesting question. You know, does this whole thing with the fees, does that change how we see these online services in the first place? I mean, for years and years, we've all gotten so used to these free services. But maybe, <laughs> maybe there's no such thing as a free lunch online. You know, it makes you realize just how many times we're making that trade off, right? Mm -hmm. Data for mm -hmm. service. And we don't even always realize it's happening. But it makes you wonder if you were faced with it. How much would you pay for an online experience that was actually truly private? It's like, how much is your digital life worth? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? And it just goes to show how important it is to really understand what's going on and to speak up for what we want, what we think is fair when it comes to our data, especially as all of this online stuff keeps changing so fast. Absolutely. Well, that's all the time we have for today's deep dive. But as always, make sure to check out the show notes for links and more information on this fascinating topic. Until next time.